Hey everyone, this is Eric. In this week's Skill Builder, I want to share with you my optimization process for sending large models to layout for exporting. Okay, so what's the big deal? Setting a model to layout and then exporting, it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, anyone who's used layout has probably done it many times. But for me, the thing isn't necessarily that process, even though I'm gonna cover that here. It's really the key word that popped out is optimization. And what's important when I use layout is I'm thinking about some of the things that I've read in the forum, some of the comments and stuff. I was layout is poor performance, or I can't use layout or something like that. And I've always loved using layout just from the very beginning, as soon as years ago when I first started. Um, I learned just kind of how it works for me. And I know that maybe that doesn't work for everyone, but I wanna share that process with you today. And I hope that it will, if you do find yourself feeling like, like you're one of those people where layout doesn't do exactly how you want it, what it, you want it to do. Um, I hope after watching this, you'll find that uh, you find a lot more comfortable uh, to push, not just use layout for exporting your, your SketchUp models, but, but also be comfortable pushing layout uh, a little further than maybe you have in the past. So let's just go ahead and get to it. Okay, so I've got this SketchUp model here. Um, it's a big master planning model. It's got lots of buildings. It's basically got about 10 million polygons, pretty complex. Let's just go ahead and keep it in plan view because the point of this for me is to use my SketchUp model, not just for my renderings. As you know, I like to use V-Ray and stuff like that. And, uh, it's, and my planning and my diagramming graphics, but it's also to render an illustrative plan as well. So for me, I need to I need layout in this case because I need to send my model to a page size, a real world page size, in which case the model needs to be scaled because an illustrative plan needs to have a scale. So that's what layout's great for. That's what I use it for. I'm gonna go ahead and select A3 landscape when I'm prompted to choose a template. And it doesn't matter, I chose A3, but it really doesn't matter what size because I'm gonna change it here anyway. Um, what I, the point that I'm trying to make here, or what I'd like to convey is that what we're going to do is that we're going to do a lot of work, um, up front, and that's going to save us a little bit of time down the road. So we've got our view. I'm not going to set a scale yet. It's, you can see it's set auto to raster. I'm going to come back and talk about the difference between raster, vector, and hybrid in just a second, because that's pretty much a, a key component to the optimization process is knowing which one to use when and why. So I set this up just as an A3, just because that was um, just, I needed a page size. It didn't matter. I'm going to change it right now. So under paper in document setup, I'm going to change the size. I'm going to go AO. We're going to stay in metric 1189. And we're going to do this by 841, if my memory is correct. And you can see there's a little thing that said rendering resolution. I'm going to come back and talk about that in a second. So let's go ahead and um, just kind of keep that in mind. So you can see I'm zooming out. I'm panning. Uh, it's sometimes hard to get exactly the view you want, but that's okay. I'll just adjust it. Oh, that looks good. I'm going to move my viewport. I'm going to maximize it. In this case, I want to fill my, I want to fill the page size. And once I've done that, I can set a scale to it. So by default, it comes in at whatever scale it is. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that that camera settings are showing. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on whatever scale I think will fit. If I try 500, I'm going to see that's too big. Uh, I'm going to go to 1000. I think that'll fit. Okay. That's not really the point though. The point is, is that we've got it to scale. It doesn't matter what the scale is for your drawing. We've got it to scale now. Um, have everything showing. This is where I would spend some time. I would go ahead and if I need to adjust the viewport, maybe to crop some stuff out that I don't want. If I needed to put a north arrow or a scale bar or a date or title block information, even a call out or anything else that I need to put into this, I would go ahead and do that. I would adjust the position if I need to on the page. If I knew some information was going to come down at the bottom, um, some images or something like that, I would go ahead and do all of those changes in here while I'm still in raster mode and before I've set up any duplicate pages. But for this demo, I'm just gonna go ahead and go pretty quickly because what I wanna do is set up a couple of pages to show you now that once we've got one of them set up, we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate them. 
So the first part of this process for me is basically do all the work on one page and then duplicate it. So when I work in Photoshop or if I work in any other program, an um, uh, image editor or something like that, I'm going to separate out the, the information from my SketchUp model. So you'll notice I didn't do this in SketchUp. I'm going to do it here in Layout instead. So I know that if I'm rendering in Photoshop, I kind of want to separate things out that based on the hierarchy um, going from the ground up. So start with the ground or the base layer. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. Come in here. I'm going to say I want my trees. And then I'm going to open this. I'm going to do one more and just say my buildings. So the first part of kind of working smartly, this isn't really optimization. It's just efficiency. It's just basically to say, OK, I've got this all set up and scaled the way that I want. I'm going to go ahead and go into this, say, my base one, my bait, which is going to be my line work, my ground plane. I'm going to open up my tags. And in this case, I've already got tag folders set up in SketchUp. So I just turn. I'm basically using the tag override feature to turn off all the information that I don't want to show on this particular page. So when I export it, I have just my base or my ground line work. Switching over to the trees, I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to turn base off, buildings off, extras off, leave trees on. Lastly, pop over to my buildings, select the viewport first, turn trees off, my extras, which is entourage, leave the buildings on, turn my ground plane off. So that's that first part. You can see that I'm toggling back and forth between all of them. There's no delay. If I wanted to, I could just go ahead and export straight from here. So you can see it was just a couple minutes worth of work. Import the model, set the page size, set the boundaries of the viewport, set a scale, and then duplicate and tag override as needed. So from here on out, though, I want to come back to what I said about performance and optimization. So using my tree layer, for example, just because it's just for me easier to see, I'm going to zoom in. When I zoom in really close like this, what I'm going to get is I'm going to see it really pixelated. And that's why I want to come back up to what I said is keep this in mind under Document Setup. Under, res under Rendering Resolution, there is both Display and Output Resolution. So the two are separated. So what you see in Layout is not going to be what you see in your final print. You just need to get used to that if you're not. You don't need to go change your settings. You don't need to switch to vector. You don't even need to worry. You just leave it as is. Here, though, I do want to make sure that if I am going to Photoshop, I'm going to print. I obviously want to go output as the highest resolution as possible. So I'm going to set that to high here, um, and I'm going to close that. You'll notice it doesn't change anything in my viewport. So let's go ahead and duplicate this tree layer, because I do want to create another version of it. I'm going to call it trees vector. And the reason is, is that I want to switch this one from raster. So I've got my viewport selected. And you can go vector or hybrid. I often like hybrid by default because hybrid will let you use your SketchUp materials and it'll let you use your SketchUp shadows. And that's important because vector won't use materials or shadows. But because I'm only working with edges in this case, it doesn't matter. Um, but by default, I tend to sort of um, use hybrid and not vector. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a second because like I said, when you switch to vector, it is going to take a second to make that transition or that conversion um, from the default raster that you see. OK, so that wasn't too bad. It did take a second. So that's what I think people are commenting on when they talk about poor performance, is that when you switch a very, very complex model to vector, it can have a delay. A simple model shouldn't be a problem, but a very complex model will. But what I want to do is I did that on purpose because I want to export both. Because again, it's not what I see in, in layout that matters, but it's going to be what the PDF or the export looks like that I care about. So there's my trees vector. And again, one more time, I'm going to switch pages. There's trees raster. And on that note, let's go ahead and export them. So I just want, I'm going to come over here to desktop. That's fine. PDF, that's fine. Options. So I'm just going to select pages three and four because I'm only wanting those trees. So I'm just going to ignore the other ones for right now. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to call this Trees and click Save. It should just take a second to do that export for just those two pages. And there they are. OK, so let's expand this. 
And there are my trees. It's probably a little faint. That's okay. I'm going to zoom in. So there's my trees um, raster. Here are my trees vector. So again, I'm going back and forth between the two. When I'm zoomed out this far, I can't tell any difference. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Again, we're going to zoom way, way, way in. And this is my trees raster. And yes, there is a little bit of pixelation, but it's, remember, I'm zoomed in about 800% or 1000%. It's looks still looks pretty good. Let's click over to vector. And if I can sort of pan over to where maybe a similar spot. And of course, the vector line work is going to be a little bit cleaner. But the point I'm trying to make is that is the vector line work worth a little bit of that, that delay? And to me, the answer is no. I would only really use vector is if I'm going to go to Adobe Illustrator or something like that, where I need to actually take those edges and manipulate them. And like, I want to make the stroke bigger, or I want to increase the resolution or put a gradient on those or something like that. In which case, keeping that vector is very, very important. But if I'm just going to go to Photoshop, in which case it's going to rasterize these anyway, then, then it doesn't matter. Not only can I not see the difference even when zoomed in, or I can say I barely see the difference when zoomed in. Um, if I go up here to view, actual size, you can see that viewing at actual size, this is the print resolution. So this is what it's going to look like when it's printed at AO. And again, I can't see any difference in resolution. And of course, if I zoom, if I'm going to be viewing this on a screen, the chances are I'm actually going to be zoomed out even further. I'm going to be zoomed to fit in which case I'm going to see all the trees on the screen. And again, not just my trees, but all my other line work that I'm going to export as well. So that's it for my process. I hope that you found this useful. Um, again, I'm just going to kind of remind you, kind of cover what I just said. Um, don't think that everything needs to be vector because it doesn't. The reality is, is that you need to think about what you want to accomplish and then, of course, make sure that your settings support that. In this case, my resolution is not handled by vector versus raster. It's handled by the page size. And it's handled by the scale of the drawing. Um, so when those two things are set correctly, then you don't need to worry about the actual line itself or any pixelization of the line. And especially don't worry about what the layout viewport looks like, because that's just a display resolution. So. If you have a different way to do it, if you find this doesn't work, or you've, um, if you, there's other tips and tricks that you want to share that maybe I didn't cover, let us know in the comments because we read them and we respond to them. So again, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and we will see you again next week. Thanks.